This is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, and uh, I'm just uh, thinking about uh, this journey I have taken on how to figure out how to turn a, what was a monocrop grass system, a lawn, into a regenerative agricultural system. So this was all lawn and um, that was it. That's what Floridians like. They like mowed lawn. Um, mowed lawn is horrible for soil health biology in general. Uh, sand is extremely delicate and gets destroyed when you mow it and compact it. Having a little rainstorm. So the way that I fixed this monocrop system uh, was to start adding the fruit trees. So I planted the fruit trees right in the lawn and uh, then I would like add wood chip rings around them and continue to mow the lawn. Uh, I, the trees just never did anything and some of them would die and these were nursery grown uh, chemically started trees so they're at a disadvantage right from the start um, so in this lawn that I put wood chips around I would make our own wood chips we have a tractor and a mulcher I don't use it anymore I like a lot whole limbs I don't like wood chips that much I like pine shavings but anyway so this lawn wood chip compacted sand monocrop and fruit trees um but it was a lawn at least it had a name i just let grow out when i let it grow out all of a sudden it turned into uh weeds and was unkempt. We had our homeowner's insurance policy canceled because uh, they did not like the transition period, which was kind of ugly and didn't have a lot of diversity and um, just wasn't that healthy looking of a system. So when you have a monocrop, it's like tall grass. That would be like a whole different challenge. Our grass is like short, so um, it would probably be like starting with something like this to plant your true fruit trees in, which is good. You just have to, like Centropic Farming does, you have to manage for height so that your trees don't get outcompeted until they reach a certain height. Our orchard floor is a manageable two feet and the trees don't seem to have a problem uh, outcompeting it. So you have to, the way to fix the monocrop problem is to start adding diversity. So your fruit trees and then the grass and then some, maybe some passion vine to grow up the grass to pull it down. And probably some ginger would be good. And heliconias definitely. You need to change the biology in the in your orchard floor 
from the bi biology that favors the grass to the biology that favors the other plants, your tropical fruit trees. So while you're planting other plants into the system, because it's all about diversity, you want to use biological primers, is what we did. That's, I noticed the biggest change in our system within two weeks after applying biodynamic prep 500. I was sold after that on biodynamics. And um, it's the first time I ever saw what uh, soil aggregation was. But it can't happen on mowed lawn, I know that. Um, it, the grass has to be like a certain, it has to be undisturbed. I mean, that's a key part of it. So increasing the biology. So you have to change the biology and you don't want to favor the, uh, the bacteria. So if you keep mowing the lawn and expect to get a biology that favors, or mowing the 10 foot tall grass over and over again, you're just favoring bacteria that is not what you want. You want fungal, fungal uh, dominant soil, especially for your fruit trees. And the only way to get that is to, is with diversity. Uh, wood chips, logs, um, uh, leaves, different plants. You don't want the same plant. As you improve the, the change the fertility, the biology in your, in your grass, as the biology changes, your lawn will become a multi-species habitat for insects, which is what this is. Biology is all everything, all the life, so. But a monocrop, people get stuck on one, they want one fix, but there is no one fix. It's a multi-system strategy for build, growing plants. So this weed strewn orchard floor is a living mulch, it's an insectaria, and it builds soil. And I don't have to do anything. But getting here was extremely hard. It didn't happen overnight. It took me, after I stopped mowing the lawn, it took about a year before I noticed results. They were very slow. One small area started with aggregation and then it slowly spread. I spread the aggregates around and made teas. There is no one system to grow naturally. So if you stick to strict um, methods like biodynamic or um, Korean natural farming or um, Indian natural, zero budget natural farming, which I believe is the best if you wanna follow any of them in a tropical climate to grow tropical fruit trees. 
I would use all the recipes. Um, having the uh, biodynamic cow manure input in the system makes fruit, trees fruit, flower and fruit. And you can see that I do have what people call chop and drop. It's those sticks there. I don't, I don't uh, make wood chips out of it. Um, it breaks down within a year, the oak logs. So I know we have good biology in here. And then all the sluffage from these big trees we have. You don't need to uh, edit out plants. You just need to add more plants and uh, build the biology with biological primers and manage like you would a syntropic system. I mean, we have like so many native species growing in this and it's a perennial, it's a perennial system. Some of the grasses are annuals, but most of this is perennial. Or probably, I don't know, it changes. I mean, it's, if you look at different times throughout the year, it's different. Um, below the higher stuff. And it changes. All the other trees that come in, that grow on their own. I let them. So yeah, having our homeowner's insurance canceled because of the weeds here in Florida was really shocking. And um, everyone does the same thing. They all mow the grass, which has created all the problems we have with stormwater runoff and killing the lagoon the Indian River Lagoon. And changing the system, changing people's perception of what is needed. And uh, in here in Florida to fix things is really hard, but I kind of feel like maybe it's catching on. So when I see the orchard floor that it doesn't have a lot of weeds and grass, I know that that's a crappy area, unless it's under a large tree. Large trees, non-native trees, tend to favor like a monocrop under them like this nitrogen fixing tree. It is all grass under there. Everything's healthy, stuff grows in there, but the stuff you don't have to plant that comes up by itself tells you how healthy your system is. I did an inventory of a lot of the, what people considered weeds or what I used to considered weeds and found that most of them were native species and have beneficial properties to humans and plants alike.
these bananas though i mean i see people's bananas in their system and they don't look as healthy as our little bananas we just planted a couple months ago a few months ago and these were chopped down at the ground so this is all new growth it's not like i chopped them down at the ground and plant them upside down I've found that planting little trees next to ginger pretty much guarantees their success. All the stuff you see above ground, that's all going below ground. And in Florida, that's the hardest thing to do, is to get the carbon into the ground. This does it for you. Just thrilled with the bananas. I mean, they're just, whoa, they look good. Mm. Having to chop and drop a bunch of stuff you think you have to chop and drop a, a bunch of stuff? This uh, perennial orchard floor is a slow release, continuous, year round chop and drop directly into your soil. It's not one species. People like to get stuck on one thing, like titonia. I don't plant titonia, I don't like it, it's too much work. Um, it turns everything into a monocrop. That's not what I want. Um, then they think that, what's the other thing I've heard people in Florida, buzzwords they pass around, what's that? Perennial peanut. That's not gonna fix your system. Diversity and biology. Diversity will bring biology. If you can grow diversity, you will have biology in your system. Until then, I mean, I sp sprayed, I've repeated this, but some people haven't heard it yet, but I sprayed this lawn every day, five days a week for several hours a day with every type of biological, you know, indigenous microorganism, tea, lab, you name it, I sprayed it. Compost tea, sourdough yeast tea, cinchweed tea, biodynamic weed teas. Because it just seemed like nothing could grow. The wood chips wasn't working. That just wasn't enough. And mowing the lawn favored bacteria. So you weren't growing fungi. So in this living tapestry, biodiverse living tapestry, I mean, you can't just it's not, you can't just say weeds. This is a perennial, I mean, you see the brown and the green? That's all sloughs off onto the top of the soil. Year round, that's where it is. And then if you stack the biology like we did with our microbial primers, compost teas, biodynamic prep teas, you name it, we sprayed it. I hate spraying anymore. Thank God I don't have to do it because I have a phobia against, it's a, it's a, I don't know. I start an anxiety loop when I think about if I have to spray, I just did it too much in the heat. I was probably delirious and just desperate to get the system to work. 
But all of a sudden, one day, it just, it looked alive. I knew it was alive and I stopped. Now I just try to plant plants, diversity. I try to split, spread and divide plants. I'm trying to grow a bunch of bananas. I try to plant a hundred plants a day. I don't think I've ever done that. Maybe I have, surely I have. Um, but that's my goal. It's not about chop and drop. It's about diversity. This isn't brush, that's like ginger and I don't know what's going on with my phone. There. Um, sugar cane, bananas, achachas, dragon fruit, Caesar weed. People freak out over Caesar weed. Caesar weed is one of my favorite plants to grow in. Caesar weed only shows up where there's excess nitrogen, I think. That's a nitrogen hyperaccumulator. And planting achachas directly in it when they're young, they all grow. I guess because they don't fall over and smother the tree is what maybe it is, like grass would do if it was eight feet tall. But Caesar weed, you know, it's called Caesar weed because Caesar drank it every day because he said it wards off illness. It's the first thing people say when they see our people that raise beef, they see our pastures and they say they hate this stuff. That's why they mow. They want just grass, but our zebus eat it. I'm sure it's uh, beneficial to the zebu if it's beneficial to us and it's beneficial for growing my achacha trees. I like it. That's a tall, Thing. I think it's, I mean, I would rather have that than Titonia because I don't have to chop and drop my Caesar weed. The leaves fall off in the winter mostly and the trees that are planted in it grow very fast. See, I plant this by myself. So it's like, you know, not everything is all the same height because there's no way I could plant everything. You know, to, uh, seeing a p garden planted out in like three days or five days, it's like, uh, that's not even possible. Unless you have like a, I don't know, a small yard, but not on a large farm or, you know, large acreage. You just can't do it. It's just like, it's a multi-year process. I've thrown so much stuff in here because this was like a horrible area to grow plants in. And the trees would die. And um, these uh, mangoes all froze along here. So obviously it wasn't, probably the compaction layer would be my guess. And um, we have uh, tortoises and armadillos that dig deep tunnels into the compacted dirt. So I don't disturb anything. We want all those animals. We want the biology. 
So I've got a lot of stuff planted in here, but you can't see it really. There's a ginger. There's hundreds of gingers planted throughout here. I did like the ginger along there. I've done it in here, but it takes two years before you see it. And then there's the mangoes, of course, and the bananas. The bananas are amazing. And then sapodilla and more mangoes and more gingers and, you know, carob. Oh, and uh, cassava. I planted a bunch of cassava in here. Should be coming up. Thank you. <clears throat> For the cassava. But you have to add diversity. And you got to manage like it's centropic if you're dealing with tall, like 10 foot monster grass. Thankfully, that wasn't our issue. This is all being grown so that we can, it's a perennial pasture to grow, to run our miniature zebus through here because I can have more zebus. I love my little miniature zebus. I want like a lot of them. So creating this perennial pasture, once these trees get bigger, I can just run them through here and they will fertilize on their own. And then I don't have to distribute manure every day as much. Anyway, this is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm and I just wanted to talk about orchard floor and weeds and building diversity and planting diversity and a biodynamic natural farm system. Have a good day.